So we've just come into the River Guadiana. Um, that is Portugal over there. And that is Spain. So yeah, we're gonna hopefully anchor off if there's room. If not, we'll go into the marina. That night, the rain started and didn't stop for five days. We'd read that with heavy rain, a lot of trees and other debris can get washed down river, so we decided to wait it out. Did we come on holiday by mistake? Nope. What are you doing, honey bun? I snapped the that is a vicious looking new boat hook. Looks like it'll do the job. Yeah, but it's a bit heavy, so no, well, I don't think it'll float. Mm. It's Tuesday the 25th of October and we are leaving to go up river today. And we've been here for four days, five days. Too long, Ben says. So um, we're going up river, aren't we? And I'm excited. This is Aymonte over here. It's really nice actually. It's got a really nice uh, square plaza there's, over there with some lovely cafes in. There's a couple of good ferrocherias. There's so, two, two supermarkets really close to the marina, which yep. are a re reasonable price. And there's also a proper little charmery, but it seems to have a lot of stuff in there. Yeah, and the uh, washing machine here is really cheap. <laughs> yeah, do your laundry. And there's yeah. a really good book swap in the laundry. Yes. So, yeah, it's been really nice so far. coming up here and the clearance at average sea level is 18 metres. It's going to be a bit scary. So, is our mast going to clear the bridge? Ah! We've got um, a red marker there. Can't really see it on the camera. Red marker there and a green marker just behind over there. So I reckon a safe bet is to aim right in the middle. This is really scary actually. This is our first time going under a bridge. Uh, Hopefully not our last. We live in our own boat, yeah. Oh, the tide's God. running so it would make a make up. Bloody hard. hell. Do you want to slow down? I can't, the tide's got us. <laughs> Please clear, please clear, please clear. Really? Oh Do you think it'll be all right? Oh. Oh, oh, loads of space. Oh, God. Only about a metre, Ben. That's loads of space. <laughs> I felt a bit sick then. I did, yeah. So far, it's really nice up here. It's very green. We've got the Richmond's derelict building envy going on. Yeah, Ben's eyeing up all the empty farmhouses. Can you imagine just That's leaving fun. a place like that with a view like this. Yeah, nuts. Unless it was only ever a farm. It's amazing. There's lots of green, and we sort of feel like we're back in England with the rain and the nice green trees and things. I think we're even considering spending a little bit of our winter months here, aren't we? Yeah, maybe. Yes. How's your coffee? Nice. It's like brown and coffee-like. Excellent. Just how I planned it. Yeah. <laughs> Trees and things in the water. 
just because it's been raining a lot over the last few days, so quite a lot of stuff's been washed down. So nice here, though. Another little town down there. There's quite a few places dotted around on the Portuguese side, but not much on the Spanish. It's quite well marked, actually, this river. It has a really interesting smell. It's like kind of like toothpaste mixed with pine trees. Oh, it's so nice to find out what that is. And the sun's coming out, so it's going to be lush. We've just anchored in the Guadiana and that's Alpha Tim on the left hand side and San Luca on the right hand side. We just got warned by an American guy up there. Um, he just said, yeah, don't go in there. One, your anchors won't hold really well because it's rock. And um, also everyone does this merry dance um, at the time you know, when the tide ch changes, because there's quite a lot of river flow comes back down. It's all tidal all the way up here. So, we're here. We finally made it up here. Talks about coming here for quite a while, haven't we? Yeah. No, I'm excited to um, go and explore the towns. And there's supposed to be two castles, which I don't think you can see from here. River down there, we're anchored just over here. Well, around the corner, you can't you can just see our mast there. Over there is Portugal, Alcatim with Alcatim, and this is San Luca de Guadiana, which is in Spain. It's amazing. Here's the fort or the castle. Yeah, Nicky thought because it's closed, we just come up here and uh, just have a look through one of the windows. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I said there was going to be a window somewhere to just peek through. Oh, and I said it's the fort. My ants. Anyway. They're still going all the way. These ants are amazing. They've come all the way up the hill and along here. I it's want to know like where they're the going. M25, isn't it? Mm. This is a zip wire that goes all the way across the river. So you start in Spain and you end up over there in Portugal. See how many you can do. You've got to pace yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I could do more, but we've got to go to the bar. Right, I was just come up wondering what the noise was, and this massive raft of stuff just nearly dislodged us from our, our anchor point. I mean, oh. there's big trees in there. Look at that shit. Oh my god, you don't want to run over that in the boat? No. But that's going to go down there. You could walk across that. You could walk across that. And it's going to plough into all the rest of the boats now. So I just hope there's uh, someone on board. Yeah, that, that moved us. Yeah. Scary. That's what happens in the River Guadiana. We're going foraging! Olives. Yep, there's olives all the way along here. Olive trees. We've seen wild fennel. We just found our first almond tree with almonds on that we ate. So exciting, within less than a week of being here and we have found prickly pear which you can eat but we haven't got any yet, quinces and pomegranates growing either side of the riverbank, um, almonds, wild fennel, I know there's wild asparagus around here somewhere but I haven't got any yet, um, and olives, so pretty bloody good place to be. Now that, I think, is wild lavender. God, there's so much stuff here. It's amazing. Awesome. We've just been on a marathon olive picking mission and picked all of these beautiful olives. Um, and the other day we picked all of these tubs as well. 
and they're already in brine but what we thought we'd do is we'd pick some more and then try and take them back for um, presents in the UK. So the reason why you bash them is because it lets the brine into the um, flesh a bit better and if you don't brine them, well I don't think anyone wouldn't, they are so bitter, like ridiculously bitter. Yeah, it's windy out there. Yeah, who says banking up the Gadiano is always calm? No one. <laughs> ah. That was what I was led to believe. That's why, that's why we came here. Yeah. All these odd little things you have to do when you've got a boat cooking in the galley because nothing works like it does in a normal kitchen, so you have to improvise all the time. Just... There we have it. Vegan pie to die for. Mm -hmm. But no animals died. <laughs> pontoon at um, Alcatim. So you've got showers over there, which are pretty useful. And then you've got where you do washing and things just up there. Um, quite cheap as well. Filling the water tanks up. What are you doing? Um, it's me outboard. It's me outboard. Yeah. For the what third time? Uh, yeah. First rule of fixing outboards is don't buy Johnson. Second rule of fixing outboards is don't run over plastic bags and overheat them. <laughs> Third rule of fixing outboards is don't leave it on the beach, let it get turned over by a wave. Oh. Get all the salt and sand Whilst you're at the pub. It. Whilst you're at the pub. Mm. Um, I've got a sickly outboard. I think it's got a bit hot and it's probably blown the head gasket. So I'm going to take the head off, even though I don't have a new gasket, just to see what's wrong, and then I'll glue it back together with some silicon and see what happens. We're leaving this wonderful place, Rio Guadiana, we've spent nearly a month here and it's sort of come to feel a little bit like home. We're just pulling up anchor now. So Tuesday 22nd is when we come out the water at Bruce's Yard in five. So yeah, it's a little bit sad really, it's sort of end of the season. Um, we're going to be two months out of the water, we're going to fly home for a month, so we'll be in um, England for December, which I'm really looking forward to just to see friends and family and see our little puppy dog and we'll do all the work that needs doing in January um, and back in the water sort of beginning of February and then we'll probably come back up here to be honest because it's such a nice place and we've met a lot of really cool people and a lot of people over winter here so and then carry on next year exciting stuff Pulling the anchor up this morning and we're going to be lifting out at Faro, so it's a little bit scary. Got my lucky necklace on, my tiger's away. 
So we're hoping they're going to put the straps in these places where we've marked it. The keel is of the shape where it's got cut away at the front. Last time we got lifted, they put the straps on and the front one slipped. And the only thing that stopped it last time from coming off completely was the forward-facing sonar. Ben's then going to tie the belts together so that they haven't got a chance of slipping off really. So we've just got to boy number 23 and we've been met by uh, this guy in the boat and we've got to follow him all the way up through the lagoons because uh, it's a bit of a, a bit of a narrow entrance and pretty shallow. in the boatyard. It's a bit weird, all being uh, high up off the ground and going to have to live like this for a month. Join us next time as we get to grips with life in the boatyard. Our home turns into a workshop. We work our way through a big list of jobs and find some big problems along the way. She lives in the bar there